Hey everyone, just not going to waste a lot of time in theory, but want to explain what you should expect from this course. Now, basically, we will be covering how do you do phishing attacks or how do you manage phishing campaigns for a corporate penetration test in real life, okay? And how do you do that with one of the most advanced phishing frameworks in the world, which is known as GoFish. Now, you need to understand one thing. Why do we do penetration testing assessments uh, that contains uh, social engineering? When you go and see one of the NIST special publications, that is 800-115, uh, one of my favorite publications. This has been outdated a little bit, uh, but you can see it has almost 80 pages and it gives you a lot of glance on how you should perform a penetration test, a real life penetration test. So here you will see they have social engineering. It should be in this one, 5.3 social engineering. So when you go ahead and open the social engineering aspects, which is right here, you will understand that Social engineering simply attempts to trick someone to reveal the information. That's what it is. Okay, that's what it is. Generally, we are trying to get some of the information which comes in the active reconnaissance phase through social engineering. Otherwise, we are trying to gain access which comes in the gaining access phase, right? Uh, sometimes it can get extended to the maintaining access phase where we are trying to expand our reach through social engineering. We are already in the system and we want to attack other systems so we may utilize social engineering. The most common way social engineering is utilized you can see over here is one form of digital social engineering is known as phishing. So that's what we generally do. Phishing is your first line of attack, right? Uh, you always start social engineering by uh, the way of phishing because you want to focus on a mass audience, right? And that's why you need a dashboard, you need a software application to manage your phishing attack, your phishing camping. Now, social engineering may also be used to target high value individuals. Generally, you know, different names given as whaling, spear phishing, etc. those kind of stuff. But the basic idea is when you are doing a corporate level phishing, you cannot just use those uh, little tools like social engineering toolkit, etc, etc. You cannot use those tools and perform a corporate level social engineering attack, right? You cannot use those in professional penetration testing. You need something bigger and that is why I am going to show you how GoFish can help you with that. It is an open source phishing framework and it's one of the best frameworks I have ever used in all of my penetration tests that are related to physical security or social engineering assessments. And the main thing is we are not going to do it on a local host which uh, most of the other uh, people are teaching. That's very impractical. We set up a live server that runs a website that has this framework, this uh, dashboard, as well as that has SSL. So you never get caught with the HTTP connections. Uh, you will be spoofing your email to send the uh, phishing campaigns. And it's, it's very, very practical what you see in the real life, right? So I hope you're very interested with this. Let's go ahead and cover this course on GoFish and let's get started. We will grab the GoFish framework which will allow us to do phishing attacks really simply and will give us a lot of power as compared to other possible ways. So GoFish is a really great framework written in the Go language. So you can just go to uh, like you can directly go to getgofish.com or you can either uh, search for that. So just search for GoFish here. You will get the getgofish.com which is for the download and here's the github repository if you want to check that out. Uh, but let's just go ahead and grab the uh, GoFish framework. Now here you can just click on download. And depending upon the uh, system which you are using you can download the correct one. Here we have the 64 bit uh, for Darwin, okay, there is the Linux 64 bit in my case. You may download depending upon what you are using here. So let me download it. Okay, let's save this file. Now, until it is downloading, let's go back. And you can just see here uh, launch a campaign in three steps. So you can see how clear interface this is uh, right here in this image, how clear and a good panel like structure it'll give you so it's a really good panel I have used it a lot and let's just go ahead and see if download has completed 
So it's about 10 seconds. Minus this thing. So it has been downloaded. Okay, just in, yeah. And let's open this up. Here you will find the gofish. So let's drag this thing on the desktop. Depending upon where you want, you can just have it anywhere. It has been extracted successfully, and now we don't need the browser anymore. Here I will like to rename it to gofish. I don't like uh, long names. So here it is. Now here I have got the gofish framework and let's see what are the files in this. So here is the readme file if you want. Here is the configuration file. In configuration file if you just open it up you can set up the ports. So let me show you guys that thing. Here are the gofish listening port where it will listen and here are the uh, gofish uh, panel server panel main server port. So if you want you can change this board 80 and 3333 if you want it's just all about uh, on you that is how gofish is and to run gofish you just need to run this file here with the terminal and that's all so I'll see you in the next lecture we will uh, we will just go ahead and explore gofish we will run this server and we will see what you can do with the gofish and how it looks so thank you so much for watching welcome back everyone in this lecture we will go ahead and start the gofish server so in last lecture we just downloaded this all folder and it's very simple to launch gofish you just open it in a terminal and it's just the running the gofish script here so it's the full stop uh, then a forward slash gofish and just press enter it will start the gofish server you can see starting gofish server at this and gofish uh, the admin server at for this so let's go ahead and check that out. I'll open Firefox here. And let's go ahead and check that. 127.0.0.1 port number 3333. Let's press enter. Now if you get this kind of error, nothing here. And here the error is like the HTTP DLS handshake error. So uh, the first record does not match, uh, looks like a DLS handshake. Now what you want to do is that make sure you are not running it on HTTP. You need to run it on HTTPS. So HTTPS, sorry. Then colon forward slash forward slash and just press enter. And here it should load. If it gives you a security warning, no matter it's your local port, just add a security exception right out there. So here is the play sign in. So it's really simple. The username is admin and the password is gofish. So G O P H I S H. Just press enter. And here you are in the gofish admin dashboard. So I will start covering up this gofish admin dashboard in the next lecture. But before that, let's go ahead. Where is it? And change the password. So you just need to click on the username and here you can change the admin uh, username and all and the passwords and here is the api key uh, you can just go ahead and reset it if you want so here we have the oh, fish was the old password and the new password right here so let's just click on save and you can see it updated successfully then let's just go ahead and log out so that is how you log in and log out and in the next lectures we'll start exploring the gofish framework uh, dashboard now i'll just uh, cancel and terminate this process by control c here so that is how you just uh, kill the server and that's all for this lecture i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching welcome back everyone in this lecture i would like you all to move your gofish framework on a vps so that you can connect a domain name with it now you can do this thing on your Kali linux machine or basically any uh, operating system or anything whichever you are using you can do this on that thing but it will not be really convenient until you have a static ip address because your domain name the domain name which uh, you will be using uh, actually you will need to have a domain name as well but we can take that for free uh, from a lot of services like freenome so that domain name will not point to your 
uh, your machine and you will need a dynamic uh, DNS and there are a lot of troubles with that so I would recommend to set up a VPS for this kind of work now I am here in my uh, digital ocean dashboard and if you don't know about DigitalOcean, you can just Google it and get yourself a account. DigitalOcean provides you uh, $10 for free by using the coupon code DO10. Uh, currently, it is the coupon code. Maybe they will change it. So you might want to check that. And you can even use, uh, if you have already an account, you can use your account. If you don't have, you can even use my referral link. That will additionally give you $10 so that you can process and uh, you can proceed with this lecture now I will create a droplet here droplet is a VPS okay I don't know what happened wrong so I'll just go ahead and click create a droplet here and it is still loading digital ocean is not working fine okay so here you need to choose a operating system now you can basically choose any operating system I'll go with the Ubuntu so it doesn't really matter here you can choose a size now this is just a phishing server doesn't need a lot of RAM so maybe $5 will be perfect now I'll take the Bangalore which is most near to me and yeah that's all you can add a SSH key if you want but I won't add any here let's create and it'll just get created soon so till then let me uh, open my email to get the password because we are not using a SSH key here not going to take more than two minutes for whole setup to come Okay, the password has come. Maybe this will also uh, work in some seconds. Got the mail on my phone. It's not working here as well. My internet connection is working, right? It's working. Then why not these both of these services are not working? Okay, the digital ocean. Yeah, so digital ocean has given me the IP and it is now here. But my mail service is not working again and the password will be very long so I need that get open a new tab maybe that will work so here is the password so I want to copy this password basically and actually the IP as well I'll just copy everything now we really don't need this digital ocean panel anywhere we just created the droplet that's all uh, there is no role of this panel let me minimize everything okay what's this this old email VPN server yeah so let's create a text file here where did I create that file create it on desktop create it on desktop here we have got it X file let's edit it paste the information we have got the IP address username and the password so let's go ahead and log in, in this server so I'll be using the terminal for this let me open a new tab Okay, is this my GoFish server running here? I don't need it. One thing if this is running or not. Yeah, so the recording is being done. Okay, so let's clear the screen now. Let's move to the desktop uh, root directory and let's go ahead and log in. So we will just use SSH and then we have root at the rate this ip address username is root at the rate the ip address control shift v for paste it'll ask me for the password it'll firstly ask me uh, do you want to connect with this so yes okay sorry uh, y e s e s here it is asking me for the password now 
I'll grab the password, paste it that and press enter. Yeah, so it is asking me to change the password. So first of all, I am adding the current password. Okay, I don't know what I typed here. Uh, let me go back. So just change your password here. Okay, password change. Clear the screen. Now we need the GoFish framework. So I really don't need it. And let's open the Firefox and get the GoFish framework URL. So we have the get GoFish dot com. And I believe I am using a it is uh, not installed system info is not well i believe i'm using it for a bit let's just go ahead with that only it what so here is the 64 bit linux uh, distribution i'll copy this link and we clear the screen i'll use the wget to get this url so wget and just paste this url and press enter and now it will download this gofish framework for you guys now it may take some time depending upon the server speed and because the server uh, is in india this is going to take a lot of time oh yeah it is taking a lot of time here I should have chosen anything else. I don't know why I chose Bangalore. So the speed is actually increasing uh, and increasing. So it'll get downloaded very soon, basically. Yeah, so it is keep on increasing now. Okay, so now it is just one. In. Yeah, so we just got that thing downloaded. Clear the screen and unzip the file. So unzip and just uh, press G and press tab to auto complete. Just unzip this file. Again, unzip is uh, not currently installed. Let's just install unzip first of all. Unzip. I thought unzip would be installed in this. So, yeah, it is now installed. Let's try this. So we just install on zip and now we are extracting everything out from that directory and here we just extracted everything so if I just list then we have a folder and we have the uh, file so we are basically concerned with the folder only now I will go ahead and leave the gofish framework server running so what I can do is I will first of all move to the gofish directory here okay and here as we saw that configuration file contains the listening port in the Kali machine now we would like to edit it because in Kali machine we were on the machine and we were able to use the local port but in this case we are using it on a VPS and we will not be able to access this before uh, like if we don't edit it so you can use any text editor I will go with the nano now here you will see that the port is 172.0.0.1 and we need to edit it to 0.0.0.0 so here we are 0.0.0.0 and that's all and I would actually change the port so it will be 1724 sorry so I just changed the port for my convenience basically and that is everything done so i will just press ctrl x and y and press enter and clear the screen and that's all now you just need to start your gofish server sorry uh, gofish server or basically i believe that on a vps uh, we need to add the 
executable permissions so i will add chmod plus x uh, permission executable permission to go fish here okay i just added that and now i believe we can just start sorry we can just start the server so here we have dot uh, slash go fish press enter and here it has started successfully so we really don't need it now and now you can access your server okay i forgot what was the ip address this is the ip address now this is not the ip address we need the ip address of the server basically and later on we will even not need the ip address because we will add a domain name to the server so at the moment we need the ip address but in next lecture we will add a domain name to this so that it will be able to point to that so now we have this ip address again you can just see page not found big uh, okay sorry we are not using the port here now here you can see the same error which means that we are not using the HTTPS version okay it'll show me a security exception but i know this is my site so it is really secure add exception and uh, i'll just go with the confirm security exception. now here is the gofish framework i will log in and change the password as soon as possible so it is the go fish is the default credentials here i am in the dashboard and let's go ahead and change the password soon so here we have it is g o p h i s h and the new password so i just change the password here yeah it got successfully changed basically and i even logged out let's go ahead and check that again so we have admin Yeah, so now we are able to log in so password has changed successfully that that was how we set up gofish on a vps and from now in next lecture we will basically set up a uh, we will set up a, a domain name to this uh, server so that we could proceed with the domain name and then we have a lot of works to do after that so we will just need a domain name basically and then we can start phishing and making the profiles landing pages email templates user groups campaigns and we can start phishing with the gofish so that was all for this lecture i see you in the next one thank you for watching welcome back everyone in the last lecture we set up the vps uh, with the gofish framework and in this lecture we want to have a domain name pointing to that vps so that we can use it now i would take a domain name from freenom.com that gives uh, the domain names for free for one year and if you want you can basically get registered uh, with a domain name that is most uh, near to your target real domain name that will be a good uh, thing to do here but here let's go ahead and sign in first i really don't know how many domains i will have in that account <laughs> i'm really not sure about it it's taking a little slow because of the vpn because maybe i am using I don't know why it's not loading up. It is working fine. Can you see that? Go there again. It just got loaded up as soon as I pressed enter. Yeah, so I will sign up with Google here with a test account. This will not have any domain name. Now I'll go to services, domain names, uh, where it is. Domain names, uh, register new domain, here it is. Okay. Here we will get a domain name. So let's get a domain name really near to us, which will be like, uh, let's say, phmc securities 
like our website is phmcsecurities.org but let's get the phmcsecurities dot maybe cfgal uh, whatever is available here you can see we have a lot and i believe that the ml one looks a little legit so i'll click on get it now and i will just check out with this domain name i'll click on check out and i'll need to fill some details here basically so i'll get it for one year maybe okay now we have used the ns for this domain name so we will configure this thing later let's go ahead and continue and proceed with this right and here we want to fill in all the details I'll add my details basically here. So, okay, what's the post? Diana. Obviously, you know that this phone number is not going to work anywhere, but still, I'll just complete the order. Okay, there is a problem. I did the shit here. <laughs> let me finish it really fast now right what's left now uh, this here i forgot to take this thing and that is why it didn't complete it now in this case it should get uh, me the domain name now i have got the domain name let's go ahead to the client area we have the services my domains here in my domains we will go ahead and click on manage domain and we will go ahead to the name servers basically so it should be here management tools and name servers now we will use the name servers of the uh, digital ocean because we are using the digital ocean here because right so digital ocean's name server are ns1.digitalocean.com ns2.digitalocean.com and ns3.digitalocean.com and you can just leave the fourth one deleted and fifth one as well so let's just go ahead and change the name servers now it may take up to 24 hours to propagate this domain name basically so uh, we are not sure if this domain name is gonna work at this time but still we will go ahead and configure our uh, digital ocean account sorry this is something else Let's log in. So we should have the droplet here. Here it is. And in right here, we have added domain in more. So maybe this interface will change as DigitalOcean has sent me the email today that they will be changing the interface. I'm actually not sure here. Now in the domain name, you can just add the domain name, whichever you have got. So for me, I have got the phmcsecurities.ml. Here we are and the server and just click on add domain. So this yeah here we have got some uh, default uh, name uh, dns records maintained here but uh, yeah we really don't need to care about them we yeah we really don't need to care about them let's just go to droplet here and let's test if our domain name is working so our port is 1724 and i'm quite sure that this domain name will not work because of the okay so the main name is actually working i didn't expect it it'll just get uh, propagated this soon so we want to use https sorry what i just typed here https 
Now I will add the security exception for this domain, this is my domain because here is the domain name running the GoFish server and here I can sorry the username and password is I actually changed that I believe so here is the domain name running uh, coffee server this is a VPS and now we can do a lot of things now what I would recommend is to go ahead in digital ocean and go right here and open a support ticket basically so uh, where is the support ticket I forgot yeah here is the support and open a support ticket and say that please unblock my SMTP server please uh, allow me to send emails and write in that about this course that you are practicing this course and give them a link of this course and tell them that you are practicing this course and you will not do anything illegal you are going to test it on your own email IDs and this is a phishing server but you uh, hereby guarantee that you will not do anything illegal here now you can tell them and they should basically unlock your SMTP server you should um, try to make convince them so if you are not able to convince them please let us know in the questions and we will try from our end now this was the thing which you need to do and if you are not able to get this thing working with your domain name you should go ahead and check with into intodns.com slash your domain name so here is my domain name intodns.com slash your domain name and just check which dns servers and which ip is it using here you should find that dns servers are changed and they are uh, on these ips basically and if these is if this is working right here it should mean that your domain has propagated successfully if it is not it should mean that like you should wait for at least 24 hours to 48 hours now this was all about setting up gofish now we are ready to start fishing and i'll see you guys in the next lecture where we will start learning this thing so see you then thank you for watching Hey, welcome back everyone in this lecture we want to get a ssl certificate for our phishing server so that no user gets a warning about https so let's go ahead and get that thing and i would also like to introduce screen to you guys so we have a program called s-e-r-w-e-n now you can just go ahead and type in apt get install screen if you guys uh, need to install that uh, so just go ahead and run this command if it is already installed it will show you it is installed otherwise it will give you an option to install it and after that you want to type in serwen -E uh, make sure you are logged into your uh, your vps i am here ssh in my vps you can just see root at the ubuntu so just type in screen and just press enter and it will just show you something just press enter again and now you can just go ahead and run your server so if I just uh, here it is yeah if I just go ahead and run my server now okay uh, let me move to the gofish directory first yeah here it is now if I just go ahead and uh, run the server so here it is running and now what I can do is I can press control a so control a and now d so d control a and d d is for detach and now I can just go ahead and close my session, my SSH session. I can just close this window, and still that GoFish server will run in background always. If I want to stop that server, I can again go ahead and type in screen. Now I don't want to press enter here. I would go ahead and uh, press dash R to reattach the last session. So here you can see it will be running, and now you can just go ahead and stop it if you want. That is how screen will help you to run your server 24 by 7 and without need to SSH in that. Now here is the website 0ssl.com which provides you, I believe it, they provide let's encrypt free SSL certificate. So we want to go ahead and get the SSL certificate from them. Now here you can just uh, enter your email if uh, you want. Here you have the domain name. So uh, like you can just enter the domain name whichever you have got i have got this domain name from them i said their terms and condition make sure you are on dns verification here 
and just go ahead and click on next this okay and uh you do you want it http uh, sorry the ww version 2 so just click on yes and it'll generate in a csr which will be right here you can then download that file for future reference maybe you will need that in future anyhow but uh yeah like let's say we will even download that thing and after it generates the csr here you will again click on next it'll generate uh, uh what it is it'll generate a let's encrypt key for you guys and then you can also download that thing so we just want these files in this lecture and next lecture we will go ahead and uh, uh, use those files we will go ahead and get those files in the server so i'm just waiting for it now it may take up to five minutes also so just wait and give it some time it has generated me the csr so i will just download this thing and i will save it now again click on next and this time it will create the account key It's taking a little long, but uh, it should just get me the account key within uh, one to two minutes. I'm just waiting for it. And as soon as we will uh, download this, we will click on next, and then it'll ask us to verify the domain name so that, like, it'll ask us that is if this domain belongs to us only. It'll make sure that. And I am still waiting. I don't know why it's taking a lot of time. Okay, it has downloaded it. Uh, sorry, the generated it. I'm now downloading it up. That is how I just downloaded that and let's just click on next and this time it'll ask me for the verification basically. I have clicked on next here. Make sure you are on the DNS verification. Here it is. It is asking me for uh, the domain verification and it asked me to uh, create these records. So for this I will go to my DigitalOcean panel here. There I will go to networking and maybe this interface will change in some time they are saying this thing uh, but uh, here i will go to domains okay here is the domain name then i will just go to i believe i will go to uh, more and manage domain and it should be similar in other uh, vps providers as well almost similar and here i will just create the txt record so txt record okay now it is giving me the txt record should be this one with the value of this one so let's find uh, here should be the value and this is the host name so host name will be the first thing which it is giving you and then we have the value here so just copy this up and paste it in the value value then just click on create record Okay, created successfully. Let's create second record as well. So here we uh, have that. We have hostname and we have the value. Okay, one second. Yeah, copied that and here pasted and create record. Now, as soon as you create these two records, so we want these two txt records. Here are they. They have now been created. We can proceed for the verification now the problem is that this might take some time you can just see here 15 to 20 minutes uh, before clicking next so I will actually uh, you know I'm not actually sure but uh, I will click on next here Okay, it says it has failed. So it has not been created still, and I actually need to wait for that basically. 
Did it just change the records? So these records got changed here. So I need to modify them. And I'll just go ahead and edit these. Now this is the main issue. So you know you need to wait for around like whatever they are saying the time. So you need to wait for that. Okay, I pasted the wrong value here and there. What the shit am I doing? This one is to be edited. This is www record. Okay. Yeah. And this is www value. I have basically created these records but they are not uh, visible so I actually need to wait for 15 to 20 minutes and I don't want to waste a lot of time for you guys so I'll see you guys in the next lecture where I'll be uh, up with these records so these records will be up and running so you know we'll just try this thing and I'll see you guys in the next lecture so uh, thank you so much for watching I'll see you then Hey, welcome back everyone in last video we just created our txt records but uh, actually i just noticed that we did a little mistake out there so you can just see here let's say uh, we want to create this record uh, let's say this one so first one you know if you just copy and paste this thing here i have actually solved this here now you can see here this dot, uh, dot phmc securities dot ml is repeating two times which should not be the case so you basically need to remove this dot phmc dot ml and you just need this part of the uh, the record so acme uh, underscore acme dash challenge so this should be the record and then here should be the value now the thing is that with the www which is the second record you will not be able to create it because you have not created the www record so uh, you basically need to create the www record first and that should be a cname record so go to cname just add www here and just add add the red sign here just click on create record and uh, that's all that is how you create the uh, www record and as soon as you create that you can now go ahead and create the uh, the second record here so just add this thing underscore acme dash challenge dot www and add the value here so the value given to us is this just add the value here just click on add record now there is a way to check your records through the you know like uh, what it is through the uh, terminal you can also go ahead and, ahead and do ms to mx toolbox uh, txt record uh, test so mx toolbox is the one which i would recommend so here dns uh, lookup text record here and you just want to copy and paste these records in the test it will just show you if they exist or not here you just want to paste this thing and test for the record and okay some okay it is yeah here you can just see dns record has been published let's check the second one which we just published so it will like it should be there here we have text lookup okay so it again says that it has been published and that was just a quick fix of our last mistake so let's go ahead and yeah go to zero so let's click on next okay i just clicked on that and it is now checking and it should basically uh, get the records because they have already been created and we have verified that thing too okay there is some unexpected error here you know this error was something else i really don't know i will just go ahead and try once again with the records trying okay i just clicked next and now the certificate is uh, basically 
yeah it is basically ready so what i have to renew and uh, repeat the process using the same le key and csr so if you have downloaded those two files you can just go ahead and open them and paste them and just click on next to uh, renew your certificate and now we have the certificate has been uh, downloaded right uh, been uh, made so here we have that thing we will now download the certificate okay I will click on this I believe I have already downloaded this one okay domain yeah I have not downloaded that uh, yeah certificate has been done now we have the domain key okay so we also got the domain key here uh, domain certificate here now we can go ahead and set up the certificate in that uh, what it is in the server so let's go ahead and do that i really don't need it something uh, else i was i mean this is something else i was working uh earlier <laughs> so let's go ahead to the terminal uh this is also something else yeah here is the terminal let's close this uh server and let's go to config.json basically so i will go to nano config.json now here you will see actually this is a uh, true but i change it to false let me just again do it on true because i remember it was true i was just doing some testing basically uh now here we have this example.crt and key.crt so we will just go ahead and change it to uh we will just change this domain basically example to the domain name so let's go ahead and change that okay now we will change it to phmc.ml right we also have this key to change right so this works uh, you can basically give it any name but uh, i just uh, give it this name to remember this thing so i'll just press ctrl x y and uh, i'll just press enter before that you can just see the settings it, these should be almost the same so now i just press ctrl c now we need to create the certificate file and the uh, key file so for that i will do is uh, i will just copy this file this file i'll just copy this with the name and i'll just edit this file then so i will just type in cp uh cofish dash admin dot crt so i will copy this thing to the same directory uh with the name of it was phmc securities okay sorry phmc s e c u r i t i e s dot m l dot crt I just press that thing let's check so here we have the certificate and i will also do the same for the key here so this time i'll okay it's a little lagging this connection is a little lagging here and something is wrong with my internet at this time yeah so now Okay, it is now working up. Let's do this again. Yeah, so I'll just manually edit this. Here I will enter key and here theory T I E S dot key. Okay, sorry, dot ML as well. Dot ML dot key. I believe everything is fine. I just cloned that thing. Now we will edit these. So we have PHMC securities with ML dot certificate first. Here we have uh, the certificate. We will just make it blank basically. Okay. Now this is going to take a little time and a little lag because the VPS and my connection is not working correctly here. 
we will just remove everything from it and we will paste uh, the files which we have got from uh, zero ssl so we have got a it should be here we have got a domain certificate so just control uh, a control c close it and here control shift v to basically paste everything yeah so it is right here and control x y and enter and let's uh, again check the file so i just type the same thing yeah it is uh, now fine so let's do this thing for key as well here it is the key so let's delete everything you know you can even use the touch command to create these files i just uh, did it to make sure that i am like you know i have the correct format and all so that was just a precaution you can just go ahead and uh, use the touch command to create these files in control a control c and here control shift v get the key yeah so control x y i believe i pressed y in yeah so now actually i need to i, I want to wait i believe there is something wrong yeah so yeah i'll just press enter here clear the screen and to confirm that it is working fine I will just uh, go there yeah so it is actually fine yep so now basically we have uh, got everything here let's just uh, make sure the name is correct phmc security.ml.key so let's go ahead and add it the uh, like check the configuration file once again so we have phmc security.ml.crt and .ml.key s e c u r i t i e s s e c u r i t i e s yeah so this looks pretty uh fine here right yeah i believe i have some problem here it should be port 80 here it is not port 80 also it should actually when you are using the uh you know when you are using this thing uh the vps it should be basically 443 here and uh, i will even go ahead and add this thing to true so just see the configurations these are the exact configurations now i will close this thing save and uh, i will start the server here yeah let me do it manually i've dot dash a come on auto complete uh, I mean, I will have to do. So I just started the server. Now it has actually started the server. So what I can do is I, you know, I am using the screen which we discussed in a later video. So I'll just press Control A and D. So now I have detached that screen here. Now let's go ahead and try to visit the website. Hmcsecurities.ml and it says uh, unable to connect wait a minute because we are not using an HTTPS maybe what I added here yeah so HTTPS is working fine you can see there is a green lock and this is from let's encrypt so that is how we get the SSL certificate and let's go ahead 1724 let's go ahead and uh, basically get the, the server working so you know you can also add the SSL certificate of login page uh, you know this is just an exception which we added here right we can even go ahead and add this to the certificate which we created so the same certificate can be shared by both of these ports 
and I will basically change this thing. So screen dash R. Okay, here is this control C to break the server here, and I will edit the nano uh, configuration dot JSON, and I will change this thing to the real certificate which we have just got so phmc -S dot ml and this one as well phmc -S -E -C -U -R -I -T -I -E -S dot ml dot key right so everything is fine here uh, i'll just go ahead and press ctrl x and then y and i'll just press enter and again start the server and now control a and d and i will now forget this thing i really never need to log in in this again now make sure you don't forget to renew your uh, ssl certificate after i believe it, it should be after three months uh, here you will find some uh, some information on the renew so i would recommend you renew it uh, on every yeah it is 90 days so you need to renew it after 90 days and it will be the same procedure so that's all done that's all for this lecture and let me just show you guys the login page this time we'll take the certificate from let's encrypt so okay uh, it, it's uh, still showing me a security exception but let me add this uh, remove the security exception yeah you can just see uh, it is now actually let's encrypt certificate you can uh, see that right so that was all in the, this lecture and from next lecture we will actually start working and start our fishing so thank you so much for watching hey welcome back everyone in this lecture we will actually go ahead and explore the gofish dashboard so i have actually uh, done some kind of uh, you know i've done some kind of uh, basic testing here so just i even don't remember the password now yeah, this is the password so i am able to basically log in so i really don't uh, you know let, let me just show you that here i have got some uh, things here let me clear the dashboard so that you can basically see how it, it's going to be done in real life so i'm just going to clear everything to get a fresh installation almost fresh installation here i will delete everything I was just testing this uh, stuff up, so this is about that. So you always want to start from uh, left to right, which is from sending profile to the dashboard, basically. So yeah, and in campaigns, I believe there should be nothing. Okay, there is one. okay the dashboard should be now clean basically yeah so uh, let's go ahead and start with the sending profile now sending profile is uh, really simple you need to enter the smtp uh, web server here basically so what i'm going to do is uh, I'll, I'll add my gmail uh, sending profile here so i'll add my gmail basically you want to get uh, a SMTP which allow you to spoof your email like SMTP to go is a really good example and we will basically cover SMTP to go in the last lecture but uh, for that uh, like before that we will set up it with the Gmail okay so first of all you want to search for Gmail SMTP settings and you should obviously have a Gmail account for this or you can basically choose any any email provider and just search for their email settings now we have here is an smtp dot okay where it is yeah so smtp server is this one then we have the port is 587 so in smtp host we want to add this server then colon and port so it was it 875 it is 587 right i will just add that 587 now username will be your email id so let's use another one uh, 
Now password will be your Gmail account password. Then you have the profile name, so it will be next server Gmail. And then you have like name can be anything. Then you have the from. So I would like to send it uh, from the name of tech server and then brackets and then my email ID. Now basically this is the field where you have everything with spoofing. If I wanted to send this email from Bill Gates, I will add Bill Gates here and in the brackets I will add Bill at the rate Microsoft.com. So this is where the sender, the receiver will see who the message, whom the person has sent this message. This is the main thing. But with Gmail, I am quite sure they will not allow you to send this uh, an from another email. So for that, we will basically uh, use some other SMTP relays in uh, the last chapters. But till then, we will uh, uh, like we want to target. Uh, everything else with the campings user and groups email templates and landing page so till then just go ahead and uh, get this thing and here you have the test email basically so you can send this test email to anyone okay so just send a test email okay now it says that uh, uh, please log in via a browser now gmail is not allowing me to send the email so this might be because less secure apps are not available on that email account now you can basically go ahead and change your settings okay that email account is even not listed here you know guys at this time uh, i'm a little blank because that email account i'll i'll have to add that email account here now you want to search for how to enable less secure apps for uh, signing now you can just see it basically blocked the sign in so you want to enable the less secure apps my account now this will be different for all providers out and actually i'm not sure where uh, this will be so sign in and security maybe right let's go in that here we should have something like a, like a let secure a less secure apps so i am not able to find that yeah here it is allow less secure apps i will just own it and now I will be able to send the test email. It is still blocking me here. So I believe I will not be able to use Gmail, guys. So let's see if I can do something with this. Otherwise, I will uh, make another account and I'll just get back with that. Uh, I'll just cancel this and I'll try again if so I'm not able to do that yeah I will not be able to do that because Gmail is not allowing me to use their account now I will get a account fast Outlook will allow me and I'm quite sure I already have made an Outlook for this kind of testing there should be an account I will just check that with logging in so Outlook S MTP settings. Sorry, the the settings is a little wrong there. And then let's try. Oh no, my connection is gone weird slow at this. Something is really wrong. Right. Let's check. I believe I have an account. HMC Securities.
at the rate outlook.com yeah i i remember i have this account let me check the password if able to log in okay this is wrong maybe this password yeah i got the password so i can basically use the smtp here so this is the smtp sorry we need the smtp we'll get the smtp settings till then let me uh, add the username and password here so we have it as thmc securities I have the password as this in case and I will add the same thing here as well. So I will add PHMC securities here and the port and SMTP server so the port is again 587 and the server is this one we have 587 and it is same 587 so I will just change the SMTP here okay that's all with these settings let's do a test again now oh, it should work fine I just hope it will send the email. Okay, just go for it. Yeah, email sent. So now the test was successful. Let's we now we can just uh, go ahead and uh, just save this profile. I even got the email on my phone actually. So we just save this profile and okay, I will rename it to Ethnology email account. So I will rename it here. To just uh, make sure I am working correctly, PHMC Outlook account, right? Let's just save it. You know, in later video, we will uh, try to get an SMTP server which will allow us to send spoofed email, but now this will not allow us. So, in next lecture, we will cover up the landing page and the email template. Uh, till then, I'll take the leave. So, thank you so much for watching. Hey, welcome back guys in last lecture we configured the smtp profile in this lecture we will talk about the landing page and the email template so let's go to landing page and it's really a great feature in uh, gofish framework that you can just give it a name let me just uh, give it facebook okay now i am not saying anything wrong about facebook here i am just using it uh, for the testing purposes and i can basically use any website but you know this is the most common one which people try to fish i'll just click on import site and i will add the url of the page here facebook.com i'll just click on import and here it has done all the work for me i just want to click on capture submitted data and capture passwords and then redirect the users to hold on yeah okay so then redirect the users to real facebook.com after they submit their data to me i'll just click on save page and hold on for a moment yeah the facebook page has been saved and i'll just go ahead and click uh, create an email template now so landing page was the page where a visitor will go and submit his data email template is the uh, the email which he will receive so we have okay facebook email i will even import the email here now to import the email you basically you know like you can add your own email uh, in the html format but i will import an old email from my account now i believe this account was used for facebook uh a lot before a 
yeah i have a message with from facebook this is an old email from facebook to me right or will it work is there any other email which i have so okay i i anything else yeah so i only have one email from facebook basically on this account and i will actually work with that only so this will be okay what the shit it is it is working now You know now it's not even showing me the uh, the mails. I believe internet is working fine now. Yeah, I want to search it. I don't even have a Facebook account on this uh, email. For the testing purposes, guys, you know, I believe there should be something in social. Social, there is. Uh, or shall I remember? Just for the testing purposes, okay. Uh, what I will do is, I will I will actually take this Quora email, okay. It was an old answer request to me. This is just for the testing purpose. You can basically, uh, like you can basically change the, like you can have the Facebook email as also. Now you want to uh, view the source of the email so I will just click on show original here so show original will take me to the source of email this is the source and there should be a copy to clipboard button here it is I just copied that thing to clipboard and I will here paste this thing and make sure this is ticked and let's just go ahead and click on import so like this will import everything now I didn't have that Facebook message you can even have a Facebook message here Okay, I will actually change it to Quora Quora uh, what it was question here am I typing so this is just for the testing purposes you can add anything let's just save it we also made an email template let's create users and group Users in a group are just a group to whom you want to send this email. So testing group and in this you want to you can even import the CSV file or you can add the group manually. So Sagar console Sagar or let me get it on my Gmail the CEO add it. Now I have got only one person in my group. I will click on save change and let's go to camping let's make a camping now so in campings we want to click on new campings i'm just waiting for uh, this thing to stop so let's create a camping and camping name will be test a email template which email you want to use i will use the quota question request uh, which landing page i will use the facebook now they don't have any connection but i'm just using it for the testing purposes now here comes the url benefit i will add the https version okay let's check the syntax it is correct so phmgcurities.ml with https here Schedule time and let's just uh, leave it as, as it is. Sending profile will be PHMC Outlook and 
group will be this one. Let's send this camping. Camping scheduled. Say sending. I'll basically go to dashboard here. So it says queued. I don't uh, know why it queued it. Now there are no errors, but uh, it actually queued it. So it is uh, still the status is still sending, and uh, I'll get back to you guys in the next video where. You know like when i'll receive this email so i'll open the email and i'll show you guys so uh, on the dashboard you can basically see the email sent okay email has been sent there is the email opened email uh, click link and the submitted data so let's do this thing in the next video here i have the time limitations so i'll see you guys in the next lecture uh, thank you so much for watching hey welcome back guys uh, in this lecture let's go ahead and uh, open a private tab and let's uh, visit the email so basically let's visit our gmail account and see what happens when we go ahead and surf the uh, the things uh, right here so here we are sign in okay, let's uh, enter the email here I believe this is the password. I am able to log in, and now you will uh, just see that here is the email which uh, we sent. So let's open it. This is email is uh, coming from Outlook.com, but you can even spoof it with a custom SMTP. Now here it seems like a really legit email but as soon as we click on write answer here it will take us to our page you can just see that it is taking us to our fake page now this is the fake Facebook page here you can just see that uh, here I don't know why it's not loading these images perfectly but that can be uh, like you know that can be some issue with the cloning the site so you can just go ahead and to facebook.com right click uh, view page source and you can uh, add the source manually but uh, no problems let's add some test things here sagar pencil at the rate sagar.com okay and password uh, this is a test okay let's uh, press enter and you can uh, see that it will redirect me to facebook.com the real facebook.com right now there were some problems with the landing page here you can see there is some problem basically let's try to visit the website ourselves okay we need the https okay i directly i cannot directly visit this site i want to check this site again so you can just see even gmail is not giving me any issues about the fake phishing website and all now guys there is some problem with uh, the cloning of site here you can just see this is not working at all this is some problem with cloning so you might uh, just go ahead and enter the correct source of the page this is some problem in cloning when we create the, some landing page but uh, let's go ahead and check the dashboard let's refresh the dashboard here you see emails and email open click link and submitted data now it is saying submitted data uh, like it is not showing me any submitted data uh, but you know we actually submitted that data so there is a little problem with the framework here let's go ahead and try something else let's go ahead and create another landing page and uh, this time maybe the you know like uh, my website okay so let's go ahead and do that
import now i'm not quite yeah sorry now i'm not quite sure will like it will be able to import my site correctly or not it was able to do that okay great let's not redirect the user anywhere so we have got the page let's uh you know let's go ahead and create one more campaign here and let's do this thing on a test email this time okay let's add this test email user basically this is the demo email Okay, I added the second user as well. Okay, sorry, I am making a new group, right? No problems. I just made a new group here. Temp mail. Let's launch one more camping. Camping. Agarbansal website template will be let's add the same template my site so everything is fine sending profile will be the same and the group will be temp mail this time let's launch this campaign as well so it will send me the email within one minute now it says sending but uh, it should basically in the campaigns you know you can basically monitor all of them but uh, I really don't need this campaign I'll delete it it is saying cute but uh, it should basically get that thing within one minute in progress right So email sent let's uh, see that yeah here we have also received that so get me the email here is the email let's uh, visit it yeah so now this is a perfect clone of my website right go ahead and try this thing admin admin let's log in now i'm not sure if uh, this will only yeah so it is again redirecting me there only because we didn't specify anything i'm not sure why it was not capturing the data but maybe it only captures uh yeah here you see uh, submitted data as well you can basically go ahead and see the results here okay and in the results you have submitted data right so you you have that submitted data you can basically i believe you can even export this thing i'm not sure which one to export but i will export both of them So this is the raw data mail open linked and then submitted the data right and the results so it says uh, results can be exported like that actually I, I want to check something else so 
So, you know, like, I'll get back to you guys in the next lecture where we will do something else. I, I really want to show you guys something else. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, welcome back everyone now you know like i was i was like uh, finding this thing so i don't know i just missed this arrow here so here you can just see there is a small arrow you can click on this and it'll show you the exact timeline for the person with the exact date and time as well and here you have the replay credentials and the view details you can click here and it will even show you the credentials so this is the main purpose and like i was uh, just trying to get where this is i was not getting this thing now you can just see where do you want the credentials to be submitted to so you know let me like uh, you can just click here replay credentials it'll just try to uh, log you with these credentials if it is able to let's go ahead and try that so it'll just redirect to my site with the given credentials and it will not be able to log me in because the credentials are you know they are fake here you can see cookies are blocked and not supported by the web browser you must enable cookies to use wordpress now actually the cookies are blocked so uh, i'm not able to do that and i believe my site will not allow me to do this kind of work but you can just click on replay credentials and it will try to log you in the real account with the credentials submitted by the user so that's one way you can actually go ahead and uh, land in the user's account. So this was all about GoFish. Only thing left is the SMTP profile, which enables you to send message through any email. You can see the email came from phmcsecurities.outlook.com. Let's go ahead and change it to phmcsecurities. No, let's go ahead and change it to Dan's email, which is you know the phmc email which is the dan at the rate phmc securities.org so let's change it to that and basically next lecture we will try to do this kind of stuff and i'm really curious about that to spoof the email address so see you guys till then thank you so much for watching so welcome back guys this is the final uh, lecture about the you know about the phishing with GoFish. So in this lecture, I'll talk about the email spoofing. Now, for email spoofing, it's really simple. You need any SMTP server that allow you to send email without uh, the verification of the domain name. Now, SMTP to Go is one of them. There are a lot. There are plenty of them. Now, I don't uh, say that you guys should do this, and I am not pointing anything to SMTP to Go here. Uh, you know like this if you use this kind of work uh, on daily basis if you really want to do this you can set up your own SMTP server but I'm just going to use it in a really controlled manner okay I will just do it in a really controlled manner to me only if you want to do it with others you might want to get a paid SMTP server or might want to set your own SMTP server on a VPS but I'll do it in a controlled manner because you know this also harm the reputation of the company so smtp to go ip address uh, might get harmed from this so i'll do it in a really controlled manner okay so let's go to sending profile now for this you can just go to smtp to go and uh, get yourself a account this will be this is a free account which i am using here so i'll just add a profile here so we have smtp to go profile so from I will send this email from uh, you know from Quora team. The sender will be uh, will be the no reply at the rate Quora dot com. Our host is this one port is two five two five. Username is my uh, SMTP to go username, which is exactly the same. Password is your SMTP to go password. 
and that's all now you don't want to click on send test email because this will let smtp to go uh, know that you are sending a spoof email and they will ban your account okay you just want to directly send it now i believe i said that we will be using dan's email which is dan at the phmcsecurity.org uh, with the phmc email but uh, let's use the quora email this uh, seems uh, you know this seems more genuine and hard to do i just saved that setting i'm not sure if uh, they will allow me to do this kind of work okay if i just get banned you want to try another smt okay let's uh, go to dashboard uh, or let's just go to camping here so new camping everything will be basically uh, the same okay so let's add anything doesn't really matter right sending profile SNTP go the name is uh, is to test email. let's launch this campaign and maybe they will just ban me for doing this kind of work for this you can basically you know you can just go ahead and get yourself some kind of SMTP that allow you to do this kind of work or you can actually go ahead and uh, it says sending but I believe it will just fail You know, I really this uh, email sent one. I all this is the old email I want in progress. Okay, great. Okay, it is giving me the error as expected. So the error should be that they ban me right now. Let's see. Okay, incorrect authentication data. Really. I believe I have the correct authentication sending profiles. You know, if I just it's a two five two five, right? Yeah, it is two five two five. If I just go to my dashboard, I don't want to see a banned uh, message here. This is an old email basically which uh, says 300% bounce rate. Uh, believe I believe I, I added something wrong in the in the port here. mtp to gocom secure. Okay, this was the thing. R I T I E S. Let's save it. Let's reschedule that campaign. Here we have that A. I will just copy this campaign. Everything will be already done. Just select the user group and I'll just click on it. Okay, campaign scheduled. I want to, I really want this. Okay, it says email sent. Oh, really? Email sent? Was it this fast? Wow. Let's go ahead and check that email. Uh, refreshing this temporary email. Okay. We got that thing right here. Quora team, no reply at the quora.com. You can just see that it delivered my email, right? So maybe this email can basically land in a spam folder of a lot of providers. You can just see email has been spoofed successfully and i fear they would have just banned me for this thing see that okay actually it didn't land in spam so that is why they didn't ban me and if i send this thing to gmail maybe it'll land in spam and they will ban me up so i can just see it is taking me to the phishing page it is even https no chances for anyone to survive this kind of attack in the scene no chances for anyone to survive this kind of right now 
Only thing is, if it lands in spam, it's all up to you. Maybe you might uh, want to do a fake call uh, with a spoofed call or a message which convince the user to open that uh, spam email and like which opens uh, which convince them to submit the data it's all up to you how you make them realize so that was all about phishing and i'll see you guys in the next lectures thank you so much for watching